systems are sets of interacting or interdependent components that form a functional whole. In ecology, everything is interconnected. It's all connected to everything else, from the tiniest microorganisms to entire ecosystems. Take a coral reef, for instance. It's a complex system where coral polyps, fish, algae, and countless other organisms interact with one another. This creates a vibrant underwater world. A systems approach helps us visualize these intricate interactions in both ecological and societal contexts. It's like looking at a city from above. You see how roads, buildings, parks, and people all work together. This holistic view is crucial in understanding environmental systems. In system diagrams, we represent storages as rectangular boxes and flows as arrows. Storages are like reservoirs holding matter or energy, while the flows show how these resources move or change. Imagine a lake ecosystem. The lake itself is a storage for water, nutrients, and aquatic life, while the rainfall, evaporation, and fish migration are flows in and out of that ecosystem. We can represent that ecosystem simply with a box for the storage and arrows showing what flowed in and what flowed out. Flows in a system can be characterized as either transfers or transformations. Transfers involve a change in location of energy or matter, while transformations entail a change in the chemical nature, in the state of energy, or in the form. For instance, in the water cycle, water percolating into the soil or clouds carrying water vapor are transfers because it just goes from one place to another. On the other hand, liquid water evaporating from a lake is an example of a transformation, as is water vapor condensing into a cloud. In ecosystems, falling leaves represent a transfer of matter from trees to the ground because they're just moving, but the decomposition of those leaves is a transformation of them. Systems can be classified as either open or closed depending on how they interact with their surroundings. Open systems exchange both energy and matter across their boundaries, while closed systems only exchange energy. Almost every ecosystem is an open system. For example, a forest takes in sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide from its surroundings while it releases oxygen and water vapor. It also has animals migrating in and out. The Earth as an entire system approximates a closed system. It receives energy from the sun and it radiates heat back into space, but it exchanges very little matter with its surroundings across the atmospheric boundary. Closed systems are rare in nature, but the concept is useful in understanding global cycles and in designing experiments to study ecological processes. The Earth is a remarkable example of a single integrated system encompassing several interconnected spheres. The biosphere is all living organisms on Earth. The hydrosphere is water in all its forms, including the cryosphere, which is snow and ice. The geosphere is made of rocks and soil. The atmosphere is the gases surrounding our planet. And the anthroposphere is the human-made part of the environment. These spheres constantly interact and influence one another. For instance, plants in the biosphere take up water from the hydrosphere. They release water vapor into the atmosphere, and over time, their remains may become part of the geosphere. The cryosphere reflects sunlight, affecting global temperatures and the atmosphere, while the anthroposphere increasingly impacts all the other spheres through human activities. The concept of systems can be applied across a whole range of scales, from microscopic to global. The smallest scale we might consider a single cell is a system, with organelles working together to maintain life. Zooming out, an individual organism like a tree is a system of interconnected parts, which are themselves systems. Further still, we encounter ecosystems, perhaps a small pond or a vast rainforest. Each of these is nested within even larger systems, biomes, continents, and ultimately the entire biosphere of Earth. Understanding how systems operate at different scales is crucial in environmental science because it allows us to see how local changes can have global impacts 
and vice versa.